So today we have um, uh, Mrs. Jaya Musad uh, to handle the yoga session. Uh, she's from uh, Arvion's Power Yoga. I invite you, ma'am, to the session. Uh, I'm not able to switch on the video. The video has been disabled by the host. So if you okay. can just... One second, one uh, second, ma'am. Okay, yeah. Now, now, now she can. Ma'am, please try now. One second. Uh, yeah. Hello, ma'am. Welcome. Hello. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Oh, good morning, every. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um. One second. I hope I can see everyone. One second. I think most of the videos are switched off. Are all the videos switched off? Uh, I request all the participants just to just switch on the video, please. Yeah, I would appreciate if everybody just switches on, uh, switch on the videos, please, because we have a small exercise to do before we actually go on to the lecture part of the of yoga. So my humble request to everyone to kindly switch on your videos. I hope everybody switched on. I don't think so. One, two, three. Some of them have still not switched on. Please switch on your videos just for a couple of seconds. Or maybe till this entire session gets over. Because I would, I wish to make you all do some exercises or some kind of yoga asana or some kind of, you know, relaxation exercises, you know, so that you feel better. I'm sure you've been sitting throughout the day since yesterday and today also. So kind of a little pep up exercises to give you some kind of, uh, you know, boost or some kind of energy. I have, I hope I'm audible to all of you Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. I don't know. Might be too. Something. Yeah. Okay. I wish everybody just stand up for a while. Don't have been sitting throughout the day. I wish everybody stands up for a while. Can you please all of you stand up? I'm sure sitting on the chair for around two hours, three hours, I'm sure it must be a little hectic, a little boring. I'm sure your legs and hands must be aching also. Okay. Chalo, let's, let's boost up a little before I introduce myself a little. I'm Jaya from Pune. I'm a yoga instructor. Now beyond this, I'll let you all, I'll talk about myself and what I do and what is all yoga about. After we finish a small session. Okay? Chalo. Let's, let's jog, jog on the spot, a little jogging to yourself. So uh, just tiptoe your toes, keeping your hands loose. Keep jogging. Keep jogging. Keeping your hands loose. Jog, 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 jog. All of you all, please jog. Jog, 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 jog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Raise your arms up to your shoulder level. Jog, jog, jog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Raise your arms up. One, straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Bring your hands to your shoulder level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bend a little and jog. Bend your knees a little and jog. Jog, 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 jog. Yeah. Okay, slowly stop. Okay, we'll do some neck movements. Just because you've been sitting and watching somebody uh, not talking for a long time without moving your neck here and there. So let's do a light, small neck exercise, okay? So first stand up, turn your neck to your left. And as you inhale, turn your neck to your right. Exhaling, turn your neck to your left. We do this three times. Inhale from your left side. Exhaling, bring your neck to your right. Once more. Exhale. Again from your left, you inhale, turn your neck to your right. And from your right, you exhaling, turn your neck to the left. Okay. Now we'll do chin up and down. Place your chin on your neck. Inhaling, raise your neck up. Exhaling, bring it down. Inhaling, raise your neck up. Exhaling, bring it down. Inhaling, raise your neck up. Exhaling, bring it down. Okay, can we do some hip rotation? Keep your hands on your hips. A one feet distance between your legs. And just rotate your hips lightly. Six clockwise and six anti-clockwise. So release all those fatigue that you have in your body. Relax. Just rotate your body. Six clockwise, six anti-clockwise. Okay, after that, we'll do some toe exercise, or sorry, your uh, foot exercise. Raise your leg up and stretch your foot. One, two, keep stretching your foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now with the same leg, rotate your ankles. One, ankle, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Clock, anti-clockwise, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We do this the same with your left leg. Stretch your left leg up, stretch your foot up and down. This gives a good relaxation to your entire leg. So in case your knee is paining, your thighs are paining, sitting for a longer time, it give you a good relaxation. After that, you can rotate your ankles. Six clockwise and six anti-clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anti-clockwise, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm sure you all are feeling a little better with the small little exercise that I've gotten. Yeah, you can sit down and now I'll talk about myself. I'll give you a small introduction. I'm, I'm uh, into this yoga for the past, I think around 13 to 14 years. I've been practicing for almost 20 years. Before that, before taking this as a profession, I was working with the Times of India in the advertising section for 25 years. For me to get into this whole thing was when I saw my own parents suffering a lot with various kinds of diseases. And that is when I decided I would not want my money to, you know, to be shared out to the doctors or to the medicines and get chemicals into my body. I wanted to live a healthy life without any medicine or without any chemicals getting into my body. So that is how I got into yoga asana. Today, I'm almost 60. By God's grace, thanks to yoga asana practices, I am living a very, very healthy life. 
without any medicines. I have been getting into this profession. I've got into this profession for uh, almost three years back. I have students who have PCOD problems, people who have not been able to conceive for six to seven years, people with diabetes, people who are diabetic, people who have, you know, um, quite a obese body, especially uh, PCOD cases. Uh, ladies with a lot of PCOD problems and, you know, their monthly menstruation and whatever, whatever, whatever is it. So that and my intention, my passion to get, it's, it's a passion for me. Yoga is a passion for me. And I got into this just to ensure that people around me live a healthy life without any medicines. You know, the chemical reaction, even a small closin that gets into our body, the side effect of it remains for almost for two years, I believe kind of chemical that is used to prepare a closin and we just pop in like as if it's a chocolate. So one small headache, you get you get to a medical shop, get a closin for yourself, you just pop it in yourself. But you don't realize eventually these closins or anacins or paracetamols eventually and gradually create various other side effects and diseases in our body. So that is the very reason for me to get into this field as a profession, it's my passion, and I wish everybody lives on this earth without taking any medicines. Okay, let's get into what is yoga all about. Yoga, actually, if you go to see, it's the right living. It's how you live. It's how, what is your lifestyle. It's a harmonizing your body, mind, and your emotions. Mainly the emotions. The kind of uh, chemical reactions that happen in your body, it uh, it creates so many problems. Like, you know, the way you think, the way you think, your thyroid secretes, uh, sorry, your thyroid gland secretes, uh, the, those kind of chemicals, your uh, the stress level that is there in today's world, uh, you uh, you know you get into various kinds of diseases like diabetic, BP, and all that kind of things. So to get ourselves away from this and to live a healthy life is what yogasana does. It helps us harmonize our body, our mind, and our emotions. Now, yogasana is an eightfold part. Yama, which is self-restrainment, and it is niyama, your self-observation. Number three, it is asana, pranayama, and Pratyahara, your meditation, and samadhi. Okay? So these are step-by-step -step things that we have to get into. Now, uh, the kind of lifestyle that we are living today, you not know, the lifestyle, the way we eat, the fast food that we have, the fast track that we have, the kind of stress level that we are going through, the number of studies that we have to do, the late nights that we have, all these creates a lot of lot of chemical reactions in our body. Now, what we have got to do is to have to control all this. We have we have to slowly start controlling ourselves, to control our emotions, control how we live. We have to bring in a total balance in our body. Now, yogasana helps us to do that. There are various various asanas which helps us. First of all, internally cleansing our body. Number one, yogasana is first of all, cleansing the entire body, the toxins in our body is cleansed away. Then it takes care of the external part. And then once our physical being is slowly uh, you know, uh, balanced well, that is when we can start slowly balancing our mind also. And emotions, emotions play a major role in the diseases that we have. We should learn to, yoga asana teaches us how to control our emotions. It, uh, and it takes care of the uh, hormonal imbalances of our body. And, um, you know, uh, and it, it, you know, the way we sleep, the way we get up, the way we think, it's, it's, it, it really takes control of all of everything. 
Okay, so let us do a small exercise again in between. Uh, before I get into that, let us talk about uh, breathing. Now, what is breathing? There are some people who don't even know whether they breathe. There are some people they don't know. I mean, I mean, uh, what is the right kind of breathing? Out of hundred people, ninety nine people don't even know whether they have to when they inhale their uh, the abdomen goes in or the abdomen bulges out or what happens. Now let me explain to you what is the right uh, method of breathing. If you've seen a balloon pala, a balloon man uh, filling in hydrogen into their um, into the balloon. The balloon inflates, and once you remove the uh, the, uh, the air from the uh, balloon, the balloon becomes flat. That is the way we are supposed to breathe in our daily life. Whether we are talking, sitting, uh, cooking, dancing, chatting, walking, whatever way, the right method of breathing is: you when you inhale, your stomach should bulge out, and when you exhale, your stomach goes in. So this is very important. Sixty to seventy percent of the diseases that we have are the causes of wrong breathing pattern. It is only when we, you know, fall or when we have a heart attack or when we are running and we are pa panting for breath or something that is the way we realize oh we are breathing also correctly. So then, uh, you know, you should realize that once you start breathing, you should breathe. the breathing process should be right. You inhale. Your stomach should bulge out when you exhale. Your stomach should go in. So, can we do a small exercise on breathing right now? Sit on your chair, body straight. Okay. Now, when you're taking a deep breath, you have to inhale as much air as possible and ensure that your stomach comes out. We'll do a small exercise on breathing. Okay, I want everybody to sit straight and take a deep inhalation and see how you feel and realize whether your stomach is bulging out or your stomach is going in. Take a deep inhalation and a deep exhalation. Check for yourself how do you breathe. Once you realize this that you're not breathing in properly, you should learn, you should practice the right method of breathing. Taking a deep inhalation and a deep exhalation. Breathe in and breathe out. Do it slowly. The combination of four is to eight ratio. That is when you inhale, you take it, you count four in your mind, and when you're exhaling, you're supposed to exhale very slowly, very slowly. You'll do this three more times. Take a deep inhalation. Count four in your mind and a deep exhalation. Take a deep inhalation and a deep exhalation. We'll do this once more. Inhale, exhale. Yeah. Okay. Now, what you can do is join your palms together. And when you breathe in, stretch your arms as much as you can. Okay. I mean, if you stand, it will be really nice. Stand up and do. Join your feet together, your heels together. Join your palms. And now take a deep inhalation. In. Inhale, 
Exhale. As you exhale, put your feet down, your heels down. We'll do this once more. Inhale. Exhale. Once more. Inhale. Exhale. This is a small exercise that we've done just now. Okay. Now, Yogasana is, as I told you, is first of all cleansing the entire system of yours. This also, uh, no, this is just, just a small thing. In, in fact, your lifestyle also matters a lot on how you live, the kind of food that you eat, you know, whether you're having uh, oily food, fatty food, or, uh, you know, the wrong, uh, the, you know, if you even have food that is kept in the fridge, creates a lot of chemical, wrong, creation, wrong, wrong chemical react reactions in your body. So it is better that you avoid eating uh, stale food. It would be nice if you start having fresh food. Fruit should be had, you know, early morning, especially bananas and all should be had early morning on an empty stomach or just an hour before your meal. Never have uh, bananas or fruits, any kind of fruits along with your meal. Then the water intake. Water intake also should never be, uh, you should never have water along with your meals. Then the, uh, the uh, sleeping pattern. What time do you sleep? What time do you wake? This all starts having a, a very a wrong chemical reactions in our body. If you, if you don't follow a particular system of life, you have to have first control, have a total control on yourself. Design your, like the earlier man said, design your day. And you should ensure that exercise is a part of your life. Because if there is no flexibility in your body, your organ starts failing. And uh, later on, maybe at a later age, you'll have a lot of these kind of diseases and things like that. And then you'll end up with a lot of medicines in your, uh, in your body, you know. So it is always better to start your day with a proper exercise, which will keep your mind fresh, active throughout the day. And you will definitely lead a better life or a healthy life. Okay. Now, can we do one more, one more, one or two more exercises of yogasana? If you can all stand up once again, put your legs together. Now, your hands close to your body. Inhaling, raise your hand up. And as you exhale, stretch. See the kind of stretch you get. Keep stretching as much as you can. Stretch. Exhale. Inhale. And exhaling, come back. Again with this hand. Inhaling, raise your hands up. Exhaling, go down. And then inhale as you exhale, come down. Especially with ladies who have a lot of PCOD problems or you know menstrual problems, their monthly cycles. There are various yogasanas which really help control all these things or, you know, bring a regularity in your system, your entire system. Something like Paschimottanasana, which has helped a lot of my clients. There are, I have cases where people are, you know, for they have menstrual problems for three, three months or four, four months, they, they don't get their monthly cycle. Or there are, I have a student who has, when they get, when she gets her monthly cycle, it's on for four, one, one month and all. So there are asanas which can help control all these, uh, all these functioning of our body. Even the heart, your liver, your kidney, and so on. Okay. Uh, would anybody like to ask any questions? Anybody wanting to ask any questions? Uh, 
Okay, we'll get on to power yoga. If anybody if nobody has any questions, we'll get on to power yoga. Power yoga is totally in, is work in vogue today. And power yoga not only really takes care, of, it takes the care of your flexibility. Your, it increases your energy level. It gives you a lot of strength. Lot of strength. So I am into power yoga now, teaching power yoga to various students. And it brings out you, you have a flat tummy. You, you know, your arms, your, your, your back, your uh, chest, everything becomes strong. Your thighs become strong. The blood circulation to the body improves. Especially with exercises like jumping jack or uh, skipping and all that. So um, if anybody wants to ask me any questions, or can we get, uh, get on to some egg time or some more exercises? Ma'am, is there any dif uh, major difference between this ordinary yoga and uh, the power yoga? What is this power yes, yoga? Yes, ordinary yoga is totally, a, it's a traditional yoga. Ordinary is, uh, you can't call it ordinary yoga. Mm -hmm. It's called traditional yoga. And uh, the difference between traditional yoga and power yoga is traditional yoga takes care of the internal organs. It clears off all the toxins of the body. So whatever lifestyle you've been leading all these years. So as you start doing your traditional yoga, like the uh, uh, Setu Bandhasana or the Cobra pose, the uh, uh, Bhujangasana, what you call, especially the Surya Namaskara. Surya Namaskara has got eight yogasanas in it. It's an uh, eight yogasana built uh, Yusuri Namaskara. It not only, uh, it clears, it takes care of your entire internal organs, totally internal yoga. Power yoga is something to do with external. It gives you a lot of flexibility on your, uh, you know, on your thighs, on your back, on your arms, your shoulders, your back, everywhere. And uh, it, it's an external thing. It, it boosts your energy level. Any, any other question? Ma'am, there is a question in the chat box. Please say about Kabalbadi Pranayama. What is Kapalbadi that? Kabalbadi Pranayama. Oh. Kabalbadi Pranayama is, what you do is, I'll first tell you how, what is Kabalbadi Pranayama. Kabalbadi Pranayama is, you keep exhaling the air that is in. So first you take a deep inhalation and then you keep exhaling from your stomach. So you push your stomach in and out and the air comes automatically out to your nostril. This is a very good pranayama, again, which has helped people cure uh, diseases like leukemia, cancer, uh, or, uh, you know, any, any kind of liver diseases, any kind of kidney diseases. So doing uh, Kapalvati really, really helps. But it has to be done in the right method. And you should, according to me, uh, I would say you should not do it more than 60 times. There are people who do it for 100 times and 200 times, you know, which is absolutely wrong. Because if you don't do it right, if one small nerve gets affected, uh, you know, it could cause something else. So the right way of doing is you first inhale properly and then you just keep exhaling the air out of your stomach like this. Yeah, so this is the right way of doing it. So, I mean, you take, you know, you take a break of, you do 20, then you take a break, you do 20, and you do 20. So, uh, three times with a break, 20, 20, 20, which is really, really very beneficial for curing a lot of diseases. In fact, I should say all the diseases can be cured with uh, Kapalvati Pranayama. Except for people who are pregnant, uh, they are not supposed to do it. But others, everybody, anybody can do it, but the right way of doing it. Okay, anything else? Any other questions?
if there's no question then we can stand up and do uh, you know a little power yoga exercises a little a small uh, exercise on power yoga i wish i uh, would request everybody to stand up put your feet together put your hands together then as you jump you have to raise your hands up so 1 2 3 4 5 now doing this take care of your entire blood circulation when you raising your hands the blood circulation to your uh, heart and to your brain improves a lot if you notice when you cut your finger uh, if you raise your hand up the blood circulation stops immediately the blood flow stops immediately so doing a uh, jumping jack really takes it takes care of your heart and your brain the blood circulation to your heart and your brain improves a lot so uh, you can do uh, we can do this exercise around i mean according to your capacity uh you can start doing it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 now this kind of exercise should be avoided by people who have severe knee pain so what they can do is they can just raise their hand up and they raise their leg up this way people who are having knee pain okay any other questions now i would like people to ask me questions so that i can you know if clarify that doubts no no questions no questions from anyone okay then can we do some more exercises you can stand up raise your hands up join your palms clasp your fingers inhale and as you exhale bend to your right bend to your right now as you inhale exhaling bend to your left hold there for a couple of seconds at least 10 seconds inhale and as you release your hands you to exhale now let, let me tell you yogasana is one more thing that i would like to tell you yogasana is not just not raising your hands and legs and all that anybody can do yogasana it has to be done with proper inhalation and exhalation only then you get 100% benefit out of it so if you are just raising your hands and you know uh, bending your head or you will you will definitely not get any benefit it has to be done with proper inhalation and exhalation so when you whenever you raise any part of your body you inhale and whenever you bend forward you exhale I I am feeling a little discomforted because you know all the audio videos are on, so I'm not able to understand what is the reaction or what is it if somebody wants to say something, you know. So <laughs> ma'am, there is a question uh, in the chat box. Could you please explain about different asanas in Surya Namaskar? different asanas in surya namaskar okay there is another question too that is gives uh, can you give some yoga uh, or asanas to improve memory capacity 
especially for students okay first of all we will talk about surya namaskar surya namaskar is totally ha totally has around 7 to 8 asanas okay one is the back bending you no know? so when you bend behind you arch your body it takes care of your entire back the lower back that is there then you stretch your arms it takes care of your heart your neck and everything you get a full nice full a full stretch all over your body okay so when you bend down again it takes care of your hips your thighs and everything and then this is another asana this is the third posture which takes care of your lower back your neck because you're stretching your arms you're stretching your neck then this is a fourth posture it's called dandasana that you get into shashanka asana this is the fifth posture for surya namaskara then you go down and lie down on the floor with your forehead on the floor this is called bhujanga asana bhujanga asana is very good for abdomen thyroid and for diabetic any any abdomen related diseases and your neck especially for your thyroid then when you do parvatasana the blood flow to the brain flows properly again you get into shashangasana this takes care of your anxiety when you do shashangasana it takes care of your anxiety level again when you bring your right foot forward and you stretch this entire body in the front portion from your abdomen to your neck is stretched your leg is stretched then you come back bending forward touching your toes and then you inhale and you raise your body up so this is a total workout for your entire system right from your head to your toe so the blood flow improves you get a good stretch all over your body whatever toxins are there in your body start least starts especially gastric problem people with lot of gastric problem uh, gas problem gastric problems have got a big relief with surya namaskar your body gets toned up properly surya namaskar has got a lot lot of benefits acha what is the second question that you asked me for memory yes ma'am to improve memory capacity for especially for students to improve memory capacity the best thing would be doing pranayama you do pranayama the the very fact that you inhale and exhale properly the uh, um, oxygen level improves in your body in your brain also and it that then it takes care of your memory so pranayama is a very uh, form of you know exercise to improve your memory power and one yoga asana I'll, i'll show you one yoga asana it's called rukshasana which improves your concentration level rukshasana is called a tree pose in english where you keep your foot one foot on the other leg inhale raise your hands up and concentrate at a particular point so this improves your concentration level and slowly come down this improves definitely improves your concentration level and for for memory the best thing would be pranayama in pranayama we have vastika nadi shuddhi nadi shodha is like you you uh, inhale and exhale three opposite nostril so you, when you inhale from your left nostril you exhale from your right nostril and when you inhale from your right nostril 
your exhale to your left arm. So alternate breathing, alternate nostril breathing is called Nadi Shruti. It really takes care of your uh, the oxygen level in your body. It gives the it gives a good energy and it improves your memory. Else? There's one more question. Uh, yoga posture for uh, back pain relief. Sure, definitely I'll show you. Yoga posture for back pain, we have various kind of exercises. I'll show you the simplest one. First of all, you sit in Vajrasana. This is called Vajrasana. You sit in Vajrasana. Keep both your palms behind. Inhale and you just arch your shoulder and your neck. You get a good stretch right from your neck in your lower back. So you hold your for some seconds or at least 10 seconds and then slowly inhale, come back and go down and you relax. This is one. Okay, the other one that I'll show is Ushtrasana. It's called camel pose in English. So you kneel down, keeping your knees apart, your feet apart from behind. You have to arch your back, go behind, hold you, hold your ankles and push your hips up. So when you do this, this takes care again of your abdomen, your lower back, your neck and your chest and it strengthens your lower back. And you slowly inhale and you come back. This is called Ushtrasana. Now, the third uh, Yogasana that is good for back pain is Setu Vandasana. You lie down on the floor, bend your knees, keeping your uh, thighs apart, hold your ankles, and as you inhale, you raise your hips up. Raise your hips up as high as possible. Hold here for a couple of seconds, at least 10 seconds. And slowly, by exhaling, put your hip down on the floor. This is a very good exercise for lower back pain. You can do this even 10 times as part of power yoga. In as traditional yoga, you just hold it for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever is your capacity, you hold it and you bring it down slowly. It gives a big relief. Now, if you want to do it faster, you can do this 10 times up and down, up and down. This is a third exercise in for your back pain. The fourth one is you lie down on your back Put your chin on the floor, keep your legs together, palms close to your chest. You inhale and as you exhale, raise your body up. Now in English, this is called Cobra Pose. In Yogasana, it's called Bhujangasana. This scale takes care again of your lower back. Then your abdomen gets pulled, your neck gets pulled, your chest gets pulled. Basically for your entire body. This is one. This is the fourth one. This is called Bhujangasana. Then we have something called Dhanurasana, which is called Bo Pose in English. Hold your ankle. Put your chin on the floor. Inhale and raise your body up, your entire body up. This is called Dhanurasana. Again, good for your back, your shoulders, your arms. Slowly come down. Put your chin on the floor. And then you come back. Then we have something called cow cat or majrasana. Again, good for diabetic, for thyroid and lower back pain. You put your legs on your forelimbs. As you inhale, raise your head up and arch your back. It's 
the arch itself gives a good good stretch to your spine entire spine and then as you exhale put your chin down and squeeze your stomach which is good for diabetic it brings out all the toxins of your abdomen this is again good for back pain so these are couple of exercises good for uh your back pain any other question if you really want to live a life a disease free life and a chemical free chemical in the sense or the wrong kind of medicines or the medicines that you intake gives a wrong side effects if you want to live a, a medicine free life and a disease free life yogasana is the best to do yogasana is really best now my own experience is when i was I I was a severe asthmatic person. I had worms in my stomach, and uh, I wouldn't put on weight. My weight would always be below, you know, it would be almost thirty six or uh, maybe around forty. Thanks to yoga, now my weight has also increased. But that doesn't give a it doesn't it's not a wrong impression of the yoga that puts on weight. It doesn't. It depends on each body constitution. Each body constitution is very unique, very different. from each other so you know a practicing yoga asana has totally eradicated all these diseases from me itself this is my personal experience and with the experience with my patients with my clients i have a student who wasn't uh, conceiving for 7 years just 6 to 7 months of yoga practice she's conceived and she's already delivered also she conceived in february and uh, last week she delivered a baby boy so also with another client who had a very complicated a pregnancy or a complicated delivery uh, during her first you know child for a yeah for during her first child now in 6 months she's got she it's it's a very smooth pregnancy she's in her fifth month now and it is really taken care of. so also with my daughter in law who is in canada she's in her fifth month and she is also practicing yoga so yoga even during pregnancy takes good care of your health anything else that you would like to know ma'am what about uh, case of children can they practice for oh, because nowadays they are fully in front of their laptops exactly <clears throat> yes uh, which year onwards they can start uh, some sort of exercise or something sure sure children above 6 can definitely start in fact i would say the base of the building if it is strong i'm sure the building stands strong so if the foundation itself is strong or uh, the building might fall any time so uh, any right from the beginning stage right from the initial stage of a child maybe from the age of 6 itself if the child is put into all these kind of exercises the right lifestyle the right way of eating uh, you know timely food habits your schedule should be timed uh, you know in such a way that you know uh, you know sleep early wake up early waking up early really really improves your memory power also you your body is more active in the morning than in the night with with a certain exception yes i have people who are you know who are better off in the evening also but that's a very rare case children yes from the age of 6 you can always put them into yoga asana or some kind of exercises will definitely take take care of you know people who children who be uh, interested in going into sports they would take like to take a uh, any kind of sport as a profession yoga asana or uh, power yoga uh, all these things will definitely definitely take care of them in fact in arvion we have courses on karate we have courses on um, Uh, boxing we have courses for military people people who would want to join the army navy the defense whatever we have courses for those kind of people also and the people have definitely benefited out of it
I have one client. I have one client who has got who had a, uh, in a, she was uh, her small intestine was affected by cancer, which with the, and due to the stress level she developed diabetic. But she's been with me for uh, almost three to four months, and the kind of exercises we put on, uh, you know, we make them do has really given her a lot of benefit. So the right uh, to conclude the right lifestyle, the right food habits, your uh, exercises, exercises should be a part of your daily schedule. Like how you, you know, for you, if you don't have your lunch, it, it, you're missing something or if you're not having, I you know what you like, you're missing something. So it should, it should be a part of your life and you should start feeling them, uh, you know, that you're missing something. And you, you continuously practice it, it really, you will, the kind of energy level that it gives you. Like even if you get up at four in the morning till 10 o'clock, you will be totally active without any kind of uh, aches and pains in your body. And still you'll be healthy also. Children for pranayama, yes, you can start making them do pranayama from the age of 10 because uh, the child between, uh, I feel the child with, at the age of six and all, they don't even know whether, you know, what is breathing and all. So to make them practice that at that age would be a little difficult. But from the age of 10, definitely we can help them even breathe properly. Make them understand how to breathe. Right? Breathing itself is 60 to 70% of our breathing is has to be really... I mean, we our uh, entire body system is you know based on the right kind of breathing. If you don't breathe properly, you will start developing diseases. Then the way you think, your thought process creates a, a major uh, chemical reaction in your body. So to uh, uh, you know eliminate all this, to avoid all this, the best thing would be to do yogasana, which takes care of not only your body, your mind, and your emotions. So tomorrow we, I think we have a session. We will certainly do a lot of yoga asana instead of, you know, talking and all that. In case you have any more questions, you can always put it up. But I think for tomorrow we'll do a lot of yoga asana. So you can be mentally prepared and you can see for yourself uh, tomorrow after doing all these sessions, uh, the yoga sessions, I'm sure you'll feel much more active and you will definitely want to have this as a part of your life. Anything else? Participants, if you have any any uh, queries, please post it on the chat box. There are no more queries, ma'am. So I think we can. Uh, we shall. We can yeah. Okay. So can I see a small prayer and conclude? Okay, we'll just say a small prayer. Om Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Avashishyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your uh, session on yoga. Hope we'll be uh, seeing more asanas in the next uh, coming.